This book is certainly blowing my mind here. I'm on page 32. It says that uh, it should be remembered that the so-called northern and southern ends of the earth were only assumed. They were never factually determined more than 400 years ago now, at a time when restrictions on polar explorations prohibited determination of factual terrestrial extent. It should also be held in mind that the earth cannot be circumnavigated north and south within the meaning of circumnavigate. However, certain around-the-world flights have contributed to popular misconception that the Earth has been circumnavigated north and south. Over the North Pole, with return to north temperate zone areas, without turning around, can never be accomplished, because there is no northern end to the Earth. The same conditions hold true for the South Pole. All progressive movement beyond the respective pole points leads beyond the assumed ends of an isolated globe Earth. And that area beyond constitutes a land connection with the celestial. That connecting land, though appearing up or out from terrestrial points other than the poles, is attainable by moving by movement straight ahead from the imaginary pole points. This is not 1927. The existence of worlds beyond the poles has been confirmed by U.S. naval exploration during the 30 years since then. The confirmation is most substantial, though information has not been divulged to the public. That is why this book is dutifully, but most arduously, written. And here is a copy of a map in this book here. It says here the Earth's North Pole here. And the Earth's South Pole is here. And here is Connecting Land Discovery Beyond the South Pole, December 1928, Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd, U.S. Navy, and Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins, Land, Ice, Water, Land, Ice, and Water Throughout uni the Universe, here. Yeah. It says here, from North Pole, something the so-called Heavens Above, from South Pole into the so-called Heavens Above. Endless connecting land beyond North Pole discovered February 1947 by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. There's the North Pole. I'm not sure if he's saying... I don't know what all this means here. But apparently, if you travel beyond the, the Pole, trying to understand this here. If you travel up, what is this, the heavens here? The circle of the heavens? Ah, uh, the universe as it must deceptively appear and as it has been misinterpreted throughout the ages. So, this book here on Google, it only shows you, um, you know, pre previews of certain pages here does not show you. You have to buy the book to get the full picture here. But I can... There's 30 and 31 are not shown. They're saying right around 1927 and 28. Right when Sir Hubert Wilkins was getting ready to take off. That uh, he was told and approached that, hey, uh, you know, you, uh, when you get to the South Pole, it may just be land that just keeps on going and going and going and going. And that seems to be what this author here is trying to say. The Galilean mechanics are no longer required. 
Their purpose was to fortify the assumptive framework of the Copernican system. The laws propounded by Galileo had no consideration for the then unknown natural law which governs the real universe. They had application only to that artificial universe embraced by their imaginations in the Copernican formula. It proved to be illusory. Hence, there can be no further purpose for the mechanics intended to sustain such a premise of illusion. In other words, If the globe doesn't fit, you must acquit. And this author here is saying just that. The globe does not fit. It was made up based on their observation at the time and their thoughts and what they could see when they gazed up in the heavens and their basic understanding and their inability to travel back in those days. As this author claims that basically... Here's a projection of the Gleasons, or what is, if you, if you'll notice here, the Gleasons map is, was taken from J.S. Christopher's map. I don't know how many people realize that, but the Gleasons is a copy of this map here, J. Steer Christopher. New map of the world. It's very low resolution is all I could find, but this is, this is what the Gleason's map was made off of. We believe in our model here that this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole, this whole circle. However, the book is saying that, ah, uh, I'm not sure what the book is saying. It was later heard by prominent representatives of the Hearst organization, who were then preparing for the historical Hearst Wilkins Antarctic Expedition of 1928. He was invited to accompany Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins and Alan Lockheed president of the Lockheed Corporation, to a select meeting at the Breakfast Club in Burbank. The press presentation contain, contained the Pilgrim's photograph with that of the Australian explorer, Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins. The feature dealt with Sir Hubert's then forthcoming Antarctic expedition to discover unknown land beyond the South Pole Point. Amadeo Peter Giannini Apparently was a banker in the case of polar expeditions to confirm his disclosure of the of then unknown land existent and extending beyond both pole points. It was considered imperative that some known explorer of polar areas be convinced of the reality of physical continuity. To that end, he determined to present the subject to Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins, who at that time, in September of 1928, was about to embark upon the Antarctic Expedition sponsored by the Hearst Newspaper Interests. Chapter 4. Disclosing the Southern Land Corridor into the Heavens Above. The Pilgrim of 1928 accompanied Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins to a meeting of the Los Angeles Breakfast Club where Sir Hubert was guest of honor, and he later visited with famous Australian explorer at his quarters in Hollywood's Hotel Roosevelt, where the salient features of physical continuity were illustrated with a miniature globe symbol that permitted the quadrants of the globe to be detached. Needless to relate, Greatest stress was laid on the feature of terrestrial land extent. Sir Hubert was fully informed of the unknown and endless land extending beyond the South Pole Point, where his expedition was directed. Let me read that again. Sir Hubert was fully informed of the unknown 
an endless land extending beyond the South Pole Point, where his expedition was directed. This book claims to be non-fiction, that is, fact, not fiction, but fact. Non-fiction is equals fact. Giannini, I think he's a, an Italian banker. Let me keep going here. It became evident that the explorer was not risking his, his precious life at the forbidding South Pole merely for the purpose of measuring wind velocity and to gauge the directional activity of ice flows. Sir Hubert seemed wholeheartedly to share the conviction that the South Pole was by no means the southern end of the Earth. His statement afforded eloquent testimony that he was possessed of a powerful urge to go beyond all restrictions of theory in the pioneering spirit of a true explorer. Quote, you know, before leaving England, I was advised that if I succeeded in penetrating beyond the South Pole point, I would be drawn to another planet by the suction of its movement, unquote. Sir Hubert was visibly impressed by the prospects presented, and he gave firm assurance that he would continue beyond the traditional mathematical end of the Earth when he said, quote, Giannini, if you will show me the route to the land you claim exists beyond the South Pole, I will continue on to it in spite of all obstacles, unquote. The International News Service at Lo Los Angeles received copy of information designated the route requested by Sir Hubert, and history records his memorable discovery of land beyond the South Pole on December 12, 1928. Unbelievable! Discovery of land beyond the South Pole on December 12, 1928. There was early evidence that such previously unknown land beyond the South Pole was being subjected to a mathematical disguise which was intended to hold intact and preserve the 400-year-old Copernican conjecture. The theory was not modified to fit the fact of land extent, but the land extent was discounted to make, make it fit the theory. The Copernican theory, the reason and purpose for that southern land extension linking our Earth with the universe about us, was obscured with another patch of mathematical abstracts generously applied by the theorists. Therefore, it is still of timely value to quote another fearless dealer in reality who was heard immediately after Sir Hubert's memorable land discovery of December 12, 1928, the masterful arbiter of fact was the then famous Russian explorer Dombrova, who announced, quote, the sensational discovery of land beyond the South Pole by Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins. On December 12, 1928, demands that science change the concept it has held for the past 400 Copernican years concerning the southern contour of our Earth. Although the extent of that southern land continuity was not penetrated, its estimated length of 5,000 miles indicated endless land continuity if there had been proper interpretation of the land's existence. And though the dreamer who charted the course to that land was available as the most competent interpreter, his unmistaken interpretation of values was ignored. Thus, no attempt was made to influence a change of popular concept as dictated by the reality then disclosed. For the reality of that land beyond the South Pole holds eloquent refutation of the Copernican theory's mathematical limitations of the Earth. It was manifest that figures and limitations of theory dominated as arbiters of cosmic reality. Inasmuch as the land's existence and extent did not conform to the established figurative pattern which contributed to popular misconception, its reality had to be denied. They're saying science had to deny this and stay with the Copernican heliocentric model. They couldn't handle 
the, the land discovered beyond the South Pole, uh, possibly an infinite plane. So they had to dream up this Copernican nonsense of a spinning globe to cover their ass. However, the sensational research and explorative enterprise from 1928 till 1956, undertaken almost exclusively by the U.S. Navy's technical divisions, attests to a very definite and surprisingly active interest to determine the facts, the features of the fallacious globe-earth concept, particularly in relation to the so-called poles. Anyway, look at this here. According to established globe-earth symbol, it must be assumed that any progress beyond the northern or southern geographic centers designated by the poles would be would demand a return toward the north temperate zone or the south temperate zone. Those are words used on the Abazad 1920 map. The symbol makes such return on the other side a physical necessity. Otherwise, and as the Londoners counseled Sir Hubert Wilkins, one would experience a sharp takeoff into space. The misconception of such return from the other side of the globe symbol is so firmly fixed that popular belief holds that the Earth has in fact been circumnavigated north and south on numerous occasions. This, the belief has persisted despite the fact that there has never been a latitudinal circumnavigation of the terrestrial area. Gee, what, the, what have I just proposed? A 56th southern latitude circumnavigation around the south 56th latitude to determine this circumference and to see if the globe math is correct, which places it at about 12,125 nautical miles around the 56th degree parallel, that's north or south on a globe of our size, it says here that there has been none because there can be none. It may be claimed that Admiral Peary, Robert Peary, who knew, claimed to have, Abazad claimed to have played poker, or at least his great-grandson claims that John George Abazad played poker with Robert Peary. Now they're talking about Amundsen, allegedly the first at the, to the 90 degree south pole. It says, uh, it may be claimed that Peary, Amundsen, and others went over, quote unquote, went over the pole. However, it must also be known that such, quote unquote, over the pole accounts have mistakenly represented the term. It is realist, its realistic purpose was to show only that explorers did in fact reach the true pole points. To the poles with a turnabout for return to starting point is possible of accomplishment, but movement to either pole and over the pole with return to starting point without turning around never was and never can be accomplished. It should be realized that explorers of the past did in certain in instances reach the pole points, but it should also be realized that they very definitely did not go beyond either pole and return to their starting point from the opposite side, as popular misconception held. It goes on to say, to and over the pole point means only movement to and over the assumed mathematical end of the globe symbol, which represents no more than supposed terrestrial extent, whereas over the pole with continuing movement north from the north pole or south from the south pole with return to other known areas of the earth is impossible. When one goes beyond the poles, one is moving, as the colloquial aptly describes, out of this world. Whoa. When one goes beyond the poles, one is moving out of this world. They discovered when you go beyond the poles, you're actually, you're going off into to what we view or think of as outer space. Let me continue here. One, one then continues to move over land extending beyond the earth. That land beyond is not on either side of the earth that was conjectured by Mr. Copernicus. Such a land factor, strange as it may seem to many, is now firmly established by U.S. naval exploration beyond the poles.
firmly established. By naval exploration beyond the poles. It would be most fanciful to contend that any unknown land existed beyond the pole points if one believed that the phrase over the pole really means that explorers of the past went over the pole points from one side to the other side of a supposedly isolated globe Earth. Under such circumstances, there could be no beyond other than the space originally conjectured, but such performance from one side to the other side of an isolated globe Earth is an aspect of popular misconception. Do you hear that, globe heads? The 1928 polar expeditions of Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins and Rear Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd, U.S. Navy, did penetrate beyond the South Pole Point in a southerly direction and discovered that land extended at least 5,000 miles beyond the original southern end of the Earth. They went beyond the South Pole Point. That's 90 degrees south. They discovered that land extended at least 5,000 miles beyond the original mathematical southern end of the Earth, meaning 90 degrees south. So if you continue going on, you're simply going around the ball. But they're saying that's not what happened. They're saying that... They kept going in a southerly direction and discovered the land extended at least 5,000 miles beyond the South Pole, the southern end of the Earth. Modern expeditions have penetrated into that 5,000-mile land extent, but its end has not yet been reached. When the end of the estimate is reached, another similar estimate will be made. Such estimating and penetration to the limit of the estimate can continue ad infinitum. There is no physical end to the earth, north or south. This is blowing my mind. I mean, they're basically saying we live on an infinite flat plane. Wow, I'm just stunned that this, this is in a book from 1959. The United States and other governments have now ha, now have land bases on land which cannot be shown by the globe symbol of 1543, and its reality belatedly established the inadequacy of the 400-year-old conjecture of the Copernican bullshit Earth ends and the Earth's relation to the universe about us. The difficulty of average concept to grasp the fact of such physical continuity of the terrestrial with the celestial has resulted from the fixation that the classroom sphere depicting the earth is a proved entity of the universe. Such was never the case. It was only a symbol of unproved theory. Which is why NASA was born to go and get a picture of the fake globe. The theory of 1543 is extremely abstract. It was evolved by the most abstract science. And its framework, as described here, was based on the inescapable error of lens functioning. No amount of observation and no amount of increased lens power for magnification of luminous celestial areas can overcome the illusions developed from such lens error. Therefore, in light of values now established beyond the pole points, one may rightfully question how any physical attempt could have been made to verify the mathematized Earth ends when the theory containing such ends was developed. At that time, and until very recent years, there existed no physical means whereby progress could be made beyond the assumed ends for determination that such points were not the ends. Although we did have Eratosthenes put a couple of sticks in the ground and then measure the shadows, and then, oh, suddenly it's a ball. Or was it Pythagoras who said, yes, it's a ball, ladies and gentlemen? I'm now on page 60 of the book Worlds Beyond the Poles by Amadeo F. Giannini, the writer of this book, if this is true, and he claims this is non-fiction, he claims this is true, then 
Wow, we have been talk about being completely the wool pulled over our eyes. This whole everything is just just a uh, I don't even know. I, I'm almost speechless here. In 1543, they believed they knew, you know, this, the North and South Pole. However, they're saying to continue the pole points of 1543 to the distance beyond that ha that has to, to date been penetrated. Mark such points, the new South Pole and the new North Pole, then repeat the performance with every exploratory advance made beyond the new pole points. As the 1928 explorers beyond the South Pole estimated a land extent of 5,000 miles out of bounds of the Copernican globe Earth, the extreme limit of that estimate must be considered our new South Pole when it, when it has been reached. When future expeditions arrive at that new South Pole 5,000 miles beyond the original South Pole, they will then estimate another 5,000 miles beyond where they are for the new South Pole. So that pole-moving procedure will continue as long as men inhabit the Earth and answer the urge to explore such land highways extending beyond both pole points and as they continue to penetrate the northern and southern land extensions of the traditional Earth area, they will establish that penetration is being accomplished into celestial areas, which, from our present positions on terrestrial level, must appear to be up or out. It must become most obvious that there are no northern or southern limits to the Earth after explorers have penetrated 10, 20, and 50,000 miles beyond the originally assumed ends. And the continuing land being penetrated must therefore represent areas of the celestial after such extensive penetration into these new lands, the question would naturally arise, what else can it possibly represent? And my answer to that is the infinite plane model, where I believe it was uh, Matt or Matthew Boyland or Powerland, uh, I'm not sure how what he goes by, but he did propose that the infinite plane model, I, I believe, he, and he, uh, he proposed that we may just be one little pond, you know, uh, on an infinite ice plane. I'm not sure if, uh, if it's following the biblical let there be light, you know, if, if, uh, the areas beyond the poles, if it's light out, or if they are in constant darkness. Uh, maybe that may come in a later chapter, but I'm wondering how in the world are they exploring vast distances without the light of the sun? So this, this, uh, will definitely require much more reading. It's over, it's a 218 page book, I believe. You can read it here on Google Books. Here's the edition number in the upper left and here it is worlds beyond the poles amadeo fg giannini the basic idea so far is that we are on an infinite plane and that the caller from thailand basically said that what we believe of as our north pole and south pole she said that the real North Pole, we are south of the real North Pole. So perhaps that's why the compass needle, they come up with the whole magnetic north is always drifting and this and that. And so perhaps there is something in this vast 
plane of ice, if that's what it is. Perhaps there is a center, a north center pole. And perhaps it is like a, a circle. However, that may just be our little section of this huge infinite plane. Apparently, this writer here believes the further out you go, you're, he's saying you're st you start to go up into the celestial realm. The caller said that there were um, the elite know they can ex escape to another area. If you start seeing all the important people disappearing, that is when it's time to hit the panic button.